Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. As you may already know, the flexibility Obsidian provides is immense. You can transform your vault in a CRM with databases and interactive map views. You can manage projects with tables, calendars, Kanban boards and gallery views. Or you have Canvas to map out ideas and make connections between thoughts. And this just to name a few. In today's video, I want to show you how you can use Obsidian for data visualization by using Obsidian Chart that allows you to create stunning and interactive charts in Obsidian. But before we start, if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you'll never miss any of my future videos. And now, let's get started. First of all, we need to install Obsidian Chart. So go to Settings, Community Plugin, Browse, and search for Obsidian Charts. Install and enable. Now, with this plugin, you can create bar, line, pie, donut, polar area, and radar charts. To create any of these charts, you just need to use a code block of type chart. So, three back ticks, and then chart. Inside this code block, there are some properties. The type of the chart, let's say bar, the labels, so label 1, label 2, label 3, and label 4. The series of data. So the first one we can use the title title X with the data 2, 3, 4, and 5. The second with the title title Y with the data 5, 4, 3, and 2, and the third with the title, title Z, with the data 3, 5, 2, and 4. And this is our first bar chart. And if I change the type by writing line, as you can see now we have a line chart. Now. You can also add another property, label colors, and set it to true if you want to assign a different color to each label. And this can be useful in pie, donut, and polar chart. So for example, if I change the type again by writing pie, I can see that the chart has different colors. After the properties, you can also add some modifiers. For example, I can write width to set the width of the chart. Let's set it to 30% or 50%. I will leave the link to the documentation in the description down below if you want to learn more about this. Now, if you need to create a simple chart, you can also use the command insert new chart. So open your command palette with command P or control P and search for insert new chart. Here you can choose the type of the chart, some modifiers, the labels, for example, label one, label two, and label three, the data, So 3, minus 2, and 2. And let's add another set. So 1, 5, and 8. Click on Insert Chart. And as you can see, the plugin automatically created the code block. Now, another thing you can do is to create a chart from a table. So let's create a table call 1, call 2, call 3, and then we add some rows, row 1, row 2, row 3, and row 4, and inside I write some numbers. Now, 
Now I can add an ID to the table by writing circumflex and the name of ID. And inside the code block, here I need to add the property ID and set it with the name of the ID I choose for the table. So in this case, table. And here you have your chart with the data we inserted inside the table. A very nice thing you can do is to create a chart by using the data inside a table from another file. So let me move this table to another node. Let's create a new node, table node, and paste the table here. Of course, now we have an error. To fix this, we just need to add another property called file and write the name of the node here. So in this case, table note. Now let me open the note here on the right. And if I change some data here, you can see that my chart will be automatically updated. Lastly, if you have a table, you can also decide to replace it with a chart. Let me copy the table and paste it here. Now to do that, select the table, open your command palette and search for create chart from table. And here you have your chart. Now that you know how to create different charts, let's talk about each type of chart in a real use case. Just to be clear, I'm not a data analyst. I will do just some basic example to show you how much useful this plugin can be. With that being said, Let's start from the bar chart. The bar charts are a great way to visualize data that can be divided into different categories. Let's say that you are the owner of a store that sells t-shirts and you want to see which colors are the most popular. With the bar chart, you can easily organize the number of sales for each color side by side. As you can see, I already assigned an ID to the table. So let's create the chart. Three back ticks, chart, and then type bar ID colors and you can easily see which colors are the most popular. Now let's say that we want to see which colors were the most popular over the past year. To do that, a line chart is the best option. Here's the table with another ID. So let's create the line chart. Three back ticks, chart, and then type line. ID color year and here you have it. Now, assuming you have multiple stores, a pie chart can effortlessly illustrate the t-shirt sales across each location. This allows you to identify which store sells the most t-shirts with ease. So let's create a pie chart from this table. Three back ticks, chart, and then type pi ID block sales and label colors set to true. And you can instantly see which store sold the most t shirts. Now, the donut chart is like a pie chart but with its center removed. And this encourages the reader to focus on the length of the arc and not compare it with the total area a circle would represent. Let's simply copy paste the code of the pie chart and write here donut. And here we go. Let me change the width real fast so you can actually see them together. Okay, now let's say that you want to see the sales of your t-shirts in the last two years divided by quarters. We can use the polar area chart that is often used to plot cyclical data. I already prepared the table here with its ID. So three back ticks, chart, and then type polar area with ID sales Q2Y 
label colors set true and here you have it lastly we have the radar chart this chart offers a graphical display for showcasing multivariate data. This two-dimensional representation allows three or more quantitative variables to be plotted, originating from a common center. This chart, for example, can be useful during review processes. Imagine you want to visualize employee performance data based on rankings given by their respective SOAR manager on a single chart. This is the table with the ID employee, so three backticks, chart, and then type radar, ID employee, label colors, true, and here we go. That's amazing. Now I want to show you one last example. Let's suppose that you track your weight in a property field inside your daily notes. You can use Obsidian Chart to create a line chart querying your data from the daily notes by using DataViewJS. I already prepared some daily notes here with the weight property inside. Now, to create a line chart with DataViewJS, first of all, we need to start the code block with three backticks and then DataViewJS. You can assign a title to this chart by writing dv.span and inside parentheses you write the title. In this case we can write weight log. Now we need to define our variables. With this line I say to Obsidian chart that I want to use all the notes with the tag daily note that are not inside the folder templates and to sort them by file name. With this we retrieve the file name of our daily notes and these will be the labels of our chart. And with these, we retrieve the values of the property field weight stored inside each daily note. Now let's create the variable for our chart. Lastly, we need to render our chart by writing window.renderChart and inside parentheses chart data, our variable, comma this.container. And you have the line chart representing your weight log. And that's all for today, folks. Obsidian charts with this amazing data visualization unlock additional powerful uses for Obsidian. Remember, you can follow me on X and Mastodon and you can also join my new website for further content about productivity, PKM and note taking. I will leave all the links in the description down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, stay productive.